This story takes us to Winter Park, Florida, where a seemingly innocent game of hide-and-seek took a dark and twisted turn for Sarah Boone and George Torres. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 4748 France Court, apartment 3. My boyfriend is dead. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in his case and we were playing. And okay. Like kind of hide-and-seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Like he has, like, blood coming out of his mouth, and I don't know if, like, he had, like, an aneurysm or what happened. Right, okay, all right, okay. Listen, we're getting out of there, too. Okay, is he hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. I tried the, giving him CPR. Out of the, okay, so he's, oh, he was in a suitcase? Yes, and I fell asleep. Okay, how old is the, how old is the boyfriend, ma'am? 42-year-old man. All right, listen to me. Okay, that, um, that you see, that you I need to confirm this one. No, right, I, I understand. I just need to confirm this. Is he, is he awake at all? Is he conscious at all? No. He's purple. Is he, right, is he breathing? No. Sarah Boone, 42, and Jorge Torres, 41, shared a tumultuous relationship since 2016, marked by numerous breakups and reconciliations. Originally from Philadelphia, Jorge, a divorced father of three, had an unstable job history and legal issues. Sarah, unemployed for two years leading up to the suitcase incident, depended on alimony from her ex-husband to support herself and her child from a prior marriage. Court records detailed a troubling history of domestic violence between the couple dating back to at least 2018. February 23, 2020, unfolded a nightmarish scenario as Sarah Boone recounted a bizarre twist in what started as an ordinary evening. According to Sarah, they had been drinking when they found the idea amusing for Jorge to climb into a suitcase. She claimed Jorge climbed into the suitcase, and she zipped the suitcase shut. She left a small gap for him to breathe or be able to let himself out. The gap is big enough for two fingers to fit. Sarah claimed that during the game, with Jorge still in the suitcase, she went upstairs around 11.30 at night. She stayed awake for about half an hour before falling asleep in her bed waking up around 11.30 the next morning. Remaining in bed for another hour, she assumed Jorge was elsewhere in the house working on his laptop. Growing concerned as time passed without any sign of Jorge, Sarah eventually went downstairs to search for him. Not finding him, she presumed he had left the house. It was only when she encountered the suitcase in its original position that she left it the night before that the grim reality struck her. Jorge was still inside. Upon unzipping the suitcase, she made the horrifying discovery of Jorge's lifeless body. She hastily unzipped the suitcase and was met with the horrifying sight of Jorge, motionless, purple, and unmistakably deceased. In a state of shock, she called her ex-husband, Brian Boone, who lived just minutes away. Seeing Jorge's lifeless form, her ex-husband urgently advised Sarah to dial 911. Acting on the urgent advice, Sarah made the emergency call. The unusual sequence of events raises questions. If you are terrified, and you see your boyfriend dead in a suitcase, you would probably call 911 first. Why did she call her ex-husband instead? Was she trying to fix this or find a solution to get out of this mess? On the arrival of paramedics and police in response to Sarah's 911 call, they discovered Jorge's lifeless body consistent with Sarah's initial report. Subsequently, Sarah underwent questioning about the sequence of events. Sarah's account of what happened suggests a bizarre and seemingly unintentional tragedy, but suspicions soon emerge. The manner in which Sarah explains the events doesn't align with the gravity of the situation. Her demeanor during the 911 call and interactions with the police raises questions. The problem is, is I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning, when I found it. Before you called? Yes! It's one o'clock right now. I tried, I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 12.30ish, whatever. So I came downstairs, and I was like, oh, he's in the suitcase still. And that's when I found him, and I took him out, and I tried doing CPR, and then I called him, and then I called you guys. 
Did he get here before the fire department got here? Who? Your, your husband? Or yes. your ex-husband? Yes. Okay. Where did he live at? Uh, right down the street. Okay. So you were playing and who zipped him up in I did, okay. but then I fell asleep. Okay, okay. You're okay. I don't, I wasn't here. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. But I fell asleep, so I don't know if he suffocated or if I had an aneurysm or a heart attack or what. What kind of medical conditions did he have? None that I know of. Nothing that you know of. None that I take know any of. No. Class, no, no. No All we had was a bottle of wine. Literally, okay. just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzle artwork. Then we decided to play hide and seek. Mm -hmm. That's all that happened. Okay, okay. So I don't know if he had a heart attack or what in there. Like, I don't know what happened. So how long were you doing CPR on him prior to you calling 911? You tried that all morning? Yes. Okay. And then I called him while I was what doing time? CPR. Ma'am, and you can't talk to him until we get I'm down with sign. sister, okay? Just don't leave, okay, Brian? Thank you, ma'am. Ma somebody else on that call call a break and it's on the counter. I can't move yes, anything from out of the house. No, no, Bravo, no, but seriously, like, I'm still in here. I want you to sit down because I don't want you passing out. This is probably a lot for you to deal with, right? I don't water. Just water. I can get you some water, okay? Sarah wasn't arrested on the day. She said she found Jorge in the suitcase and called the police. However, the next day, she was asked to go to the police station for questioning. During the interview, forensic investigators asked for her phone, and she willingly handed it over. The search revealed two disturbing videos recorded by Sarah the night before, painting a different picture than what she had initially told the police. In one video recorded at 11.12 p.m., the suitcase was upside down in the living room. A seemingly intoxicated Sarah hurled insults at Jorge as he pleaded for her to let him out. Jorge struggled inside, pushing against the suitcase in a desperate attempt to break free. He yelled at Sarah, saying he couldn't breathe and begged to be released. Her response was chilling. Sarah could be heard laughing and taunting Jorge. In response to his distress, she callously remarked, Yeah, that's what you do when you choke me. Despite Jorge's repeated pleas, and visible struggle, Sarah remained unsympathetic. When he once again expressed that he couldn't breathe, Sarah's response was cold and indifferent, stating, That's on you. Oh, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me. She further escalated the situation by adding that he should probably shut the F up. In the second video at 8.20 p.m., the suitcase was in a different location, facing upwards. These recordings suggest a desire on Sarah's part to punish Jorge for his past actions, contradicting any claim of a consensual or playful situation. The harsh and vengeful way Sarah acted raised serious questions about the nature of the events and her role in the unfolding tragedy. Sarah claimed during her interrogation that Jorge could have exited the suitcase at any point, but investigators challenged this assertion. They pointed out inconsistencies in her statements, highlighting that her previous account suggested a lighthearted situation with laughter, while the video footage showed a different, distressing scenario. The investigators emphasized that contrary to Sarah's claim, the video did not reveal any holes or separations in the zipper that Jorge could use to escape. Also very puzzling is that Sarah claimed she couldn't remember recording those moments. It's as if her memory played tricks on her, leaving investigators to piece together the eerie puzzle. What's even more baffling is that Sarah didn't try to get rid of the videos. She left them untouched, adding another layer of mystery to her involvement in the tragic end of Jorge Torres. An autopsy was performed on Jorge. A medical examiner has determined that Jorge died of positional asphyxia with environmental suffocation, consistent with prolonged confinement. Based on the medical examiner's findings, they estimated that Jorge had been in the suitcase for up to 11 hours or more. They also reported that Jorge had a black eye and other bruises and cuts on his head. His back and hands also had abrasions, bruises and cuts, indicating blunt impacts around the body. Jorge also had alcohol in his system at the time of his death. The neighbor's testimony suggests that a loud bang and dragging sounds were heard around 3 o'clock in the morning contradicting Sarah's claim of a good day without fights or physical altercations between them, typical of the couple. If these sounds were indeed the suitcase being dragged downstairs, it could explain the bruises and cuts on Jorge's body. The fact that Sarah left him in the suitcase for 11 hours after the supposed hide-and-seek game 
raises questions about her lack of empathy and delayed response to his distress, indicating a more disturbing and intentional scenario leading to Jorge's tragic death. If it were truly a playful game gone wrong, one would expect an immediate reaction to his distress and an attempt to help him rather than leaving him trapped for an extended period leading to his death. Sarah was subsequently charged with second-degree murder for killing Jorge. New breaking at 11, a woman arrested accused of zipping a man in a suitcase leading to his death. The Orange County Sheriff's Office tweeted this video of 42-year-old Sarah Boone in handcuffs. Deputies say the killing happened yesterday at a home along France Lane in Winter Park. Boone told investigators she and Jorge Torres Jr. were drinking and playing hide and seek. She says she zipped him inside the suitcase, passed out, and forgot about him. She was held in the Orange County Jail without bail. She is expected to use the battered woman defense at her trial, which as of September 2023 is scheduled to begin on December 11th, 2023. The case raises significant questions about the dynamics of abusive relationships, the consequences of toxic behavior, and the need for intervention in such situations to prevent further harm. As investigators dig into the case, they face the challenging task of unraveling the truth behind Sarah Boone's actions and determining whether Jorge Torres' death resulted from a tragic accident or a premeditated act of violence. This tragic case of Sarah Boone and Jorge Torres leaves us with a heavy heart, grappling with the unsettling details of a relationship gone horribly wrong. Our deepest sympathies go out to Jorge's friends and family, who must bear the immense burden of this loss. It is an unimaginable pain to lose a loved one under such distressing circumstances. As we reflect on the unfolding events and the legal proceedings that will follow, let us remember Jorge Torres with the respect and honor he deserves. May he continue to rest in peace, free from the anguish that marked his final moments. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video.